Hey guys and welcome back. I hope you all had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Now that that is all out of the way for now, today I am going to be looking at the storeroom for my mighty fortress up here. I am going to... I've already begun, as you can see, uh, getting things ready to start digging out a big bowl of earth uh, using a power pick rune. And uh, I'm going to lightly touch on a feature that is new with the latest version of RuneCraft, which I don't think you could do before, which is when you have a, a rune pattern like the power pick, which requires tier pieces, but has things like redstone dust or redstone torches before, you couldn't use either redstone dust or redstone torches as tier materials if they were used in the pattern. Now you can, which means you get some really cool looking runes and more importantly than that a very cheap and easy way of getting some tier 3 runes there so goodbye torch runes hello redstone runes for me so I've got my double power pick and I'm going to just lay at it basically and this is me done with two versions of the power picks I just run out of all the power they're in um, it's quite a lot if you use the engraver to stack them like that, though the pick has been nerfed to 128 per tier now. So as you can see, I've completed digging this out, and I've begun work on the next process, which is replacing all of this using an embedder rune. You can see it in action here. You place down an enchanted block adjacent to a surface, and if it's tier 1 or tier 0, it will replace that block. It's quite an easy rune to make, so I'll go and create another one of those, as I need to. Acquiring all this redstone laid out like that. A tier block in the middle, I'm using obsidian because I've got so much of it. Then you activate it with a block. With a block, not with a block. And then you just carry on replacing. I couldn't tell you how many uses you get out of the thing. But it's a considerable amount. And for things like this, where you don't want to have to destroy something and then place a block, it's a really useful thing to have. So I will replace the outer shell with obsidian, because I'm going to make this somewhat impenetrable insofar as I can. Given that I'm going to be having my vault actually on the fortress, then security is important. We've got a nice little pit here, made solely out of obsidian, so I'm going to continue filling it over with a nice cover and then I will build the oh, a rough a rough shell of the walls and I'll come back to you when it comes to the door because I'm going to do some neat things with phase blocks and lock blocks for that a nice combination lock is what I'm going to see if I can create today so I'm content with this for the the walls and stuff and um, now I'm going to use an uncrafter room to take these four gold blocks and convert them back into ore so I can use them to make lock blocks and next let's see I need to think about this carefully as to how I'm going to actually do this I do plan to have a row of I'll make it hmm I'm going to work out the dimensions here, I think. So I worked it out, and this entire section here is going to be comprised of phase blocks, and these adjacent things are going to be uh, comprised of lock blocks. I've put a redstone torch below so I can make these, um, which are going to be quite integral to what I'm planning to do. Okay, and we'll start... I will need a signature and I have to have gravel, so which way is magical north? I always put my phase block signatures. That way is magical north. Like this. I'm gonna make a gravel. And I will use obsidian as the lock block. Is that right? No it's not, I'm forgetting quite obviously this. my lock block and this one is off I need to mark that somehow so I'll use that torch there uh, I will make a second one yeah. and this one will be on put it 
here. Got to keep track of this, otherwise I'm going to get hopelessly confused when it comes to actually putting it into practice. Uh, that one's on. Make that one on. Make that one and that one on. This one off. This one and this one off. Right, I'll go do that. So I have created this. Four lock blocks with a either a on torch key or an off torch key. Levers on this side to be controlled, uh, allowing a user to oops, flip this and see their torch change. And then um, also ones on the outside so that people on the outside can see what's going on in terms of that. The result is, and um, now once I place phase blocks. bit of server lag there, and um, is when I place them, oh, I miscounted, no I placed the wrong one by accident, oh well, I'll fix that off camera, but for now when I activate these lock blocks you can see there's a indicator block up at the top there, so if I go outside and lock this then flip all these switches so that they're in the off state then toggle the lock block, nothing happens which is exactly what we want if I've remembered that a uh, great way to show off a new combination lock is to forget the combination ah there we go so there's a runecraft combination lock now it wasn't until considerably later that um, I realized I'd made a couple of problems with my design initially, and I've been back to the drawing board twice since then. But I've worked out exactly what I need to do now. I have added in a small piece of extra circuitry here, this uh, end stone block here. I'm going to connect in that lock block there, and uh, well, first I actually need to enchant it, silly. From this room here, drop that in there. And you can see that that is now controlling these. And I'm going to put an identical one there. And between them, that is going to be how the door is mainly opened and closed. Yes. Excellent. Now, there is one more piece of advanced technology that I want to add to this door. And um, I want to add a panic button or lock button, which will, regardless of the current state of the door, will it will close the door and lock it. So, the first thing I did was to extend a line of phase block circuitry, or in this particular case, just phase blocks, um, down underneath to where we'll be doing all the wiring for this. I've got a phased redstone torch. I'm going to plop on the end of that circuit there. Yeah, just so. And now I will build a platform from which we will handle all the automation that is now going to occur. The idea is that when a user hits the panic button, the first thing that happens is that an AND redstone gate gets triggered which will only work if there is redstone coming in from this torch here and from another torch, uh, sorry, and from the, the circuit itself. So if the phase blocks themselves um, aren't actually on, this circuit won't fire. And I've forgotten how it's done, so uh, yeah. And so I've done some of that work now, and I have this slightly modified AND gate that will only trigger this torch here when this is on and this is off, i.e. the door is open so the torch is missing and the switch has been flipped so somebody wants the door closed. Under those circumstances this automation signature here will fire because this is a redstone sensor and then the door will trigger. The door will only trigger when um, it is open and if I flip this switch and then the piston fires, the redstone changes, etc, etc. And as an added bonus, it's an automatic close now as well, because as soon as the re redstone torch gets brought into existence, server so like there, uh, then it fires the circuit. So once the switch is down, even if they have the right combination, they can't open the door, which is an unexpected added bonus. 
So yeah, that wraps up our storeroom. I'm quite happy with that. I think next week we'll be... we'll probably work on the farm, uh, the farm island. So thank you guys for watching this. Uh, do check out my other stuff if it interests you. And I will see you all in a future video. Cheers.